Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. The airline and commuter train industries have received funding from the federal government during the coronavirus pandemic, but one industry is feeling left out and is now busing to Washington, D.C. to hold a rally. Valley News team's Katie Opperly speaks with motor coach companies from our area making the trip. More than 500 companies from the motor coach industry are loading up and heading to Washington, D.C. for what they call the Awareness Rally. We have a route that we're going to be running uh, right through downtown uh, D.C., past the White House, uh, uh, past the, uh, uh, the Capitol. And the idea is to get the attention of our elected representatives that we need help. Uh, this industry uh, may not survive. As people cancel current and future travel plans, Thielen says the industry that normally transports 600 million people a year is shut down nationwide. Don't forget about the motor coach industry as part of the trans uh, national transportation network. Uh, well, they uh, they dedicated $100 billion to, uh, uh, to the airlines and the airports and to transits, uh, city transits and to Amtrak, and we were totally ignored. 18 Minnesota companies are making the trip to D.C., some including East Grand Forks, Bemidji, and Detroit Lakes. We have facilities and equipment that we still have to pay for, uh, insurances that still have to be done. Uh, we tried to take part of the payroll protection program, which helped for a bit. Um, a lot of us have tried doing small business loans, but uh, there's just such a great need that a lot of our motor coach companies across the nation have not been able to get the financial assistance. The hope is this rally will bring attention and support to their cause. We're hoping that we could, for our industry stake, get uh, a little bit of a, a help in that from our government. Um, we're also hoping that uh, people don't forget about us that uh, when the nation does open up again, that they would consider using some of their um, assistant money that's been coming in uh, to get on a bus and, and take a trip. These companies say they want to get help for the more than 100,000 employees in their industry. Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. The companies say the best way for anyone to help right now is to write to your local and state representatives to show sh support for the industry. The North Dakota Department of Health is reporting another 27 positive coronavirus cases in the state, but only 936 tests were completed in the report. What's well below Governor Doug Burgum's 2,000 per day hope. There were no new deaths reported Sunday, keeping the state total at 35. 24 of those deaths are from COVID-19. Four are patients who died with the disease and seven death records are still pending. 29 North Dakotans are currently in the hospital, down five from Saturday's report. Cass County saw another 24 positive cases Sunday, pushing the county's total to 805, accounting for over half of the state's total of 1,491. 792 of the overall cases are listed as recovered. In Minnesota, the state is reporting another 20 coronavirus-related deaths, the 10th day in the last 11, where there have been at least 20 deaths reported. One of the deaths Sunday is a Clay County resident in their 60s. The state's death total is now at 578. Overall, another 481 positive tests were reported in the state, the lowest since last Sunday. 11,271 Minnesotans have tested positive. 6,882 are reported as no longer needing isolation. Currently, 434 patients are in the hospital with 199 in the ICU. The COVID-19 crisis continues to hit the White House. Now three members of the coronavirus task force are isolating after being exposed to the disease. And Trump administration officials are warning the economy will take another hit in May. They are expecting employment numbers to be worse than April's historic rates. NBC's Jennifer Johnson reports from Washington. Three members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force are under self-quarantine after being exposed to COVID-19. CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield, FDA Head Dr. Stephen Hahn, and top infectious disease doctor Anthony Fauci. Further proof of how difficult this virus is to control. We have to understand that we're riding this tiger, we're not directing it. This virus is going to do what it's going to do. All three will now testify before a Senate Health Committee via video teleconference this week. COVID-19 getting into the West Wing after Katie Miller, the vice president's press secretary, and a valet serving President Trump his meals tested positive. 
Miller had been cleared one day before. The president, vice president, and others are now being screened daily. You can test negative even though you've been exposed to the virus, and then you need to wait a few days to make sure that it's not going to take off uh, on you. Meanwhile, after April's dismal numbers, White House officials predict the unemployment rate will rise to 20 percent in May. But there are no plans yet for another economic stimulus bill. If we need to spend more money to protect the American worker and the American public, we'll absolutely do that. But now having spent $3 trillion, we're going to take a few weeks. As states relax stay-at-home orders, new outbreaks are emerging, one after a party in California in violation of state rules. In Florida, beaches are packed, officials closing them in Naples. Tough decisions as some abandon social distancing rules. Vice President Mike Pence will be, quote, a little low key for the next couple of days. A senior official tells NBC News the VP is taking the advice of White House medical staff simply out of caution. He continues to test negative for the coronavirus and has no restrictions on his activities. However, the VP did not attend a national security meeting Saturday night, according to officials, saying the vice president is self-isolating is an exaggeration. This move is, quote, less than that and won't last into next week. Investigators are trying to figure out what caused a Henning, Minnesota fire that destroyed a home and garage Saturday night. It happened around 625 at 601 Douglas Avenue. Fire crews say the garage was completely engulfed in flames when they got to the scene. A nearby home and business were also on fire. Crews tell us everyone made it out safely, but a family dog was lost in the fire. The garage and home are a total loss. The business had minor damages. A celebration is underway at the Eventide Living Center in Fargo. That was video of a 96-year-old woman who beat COVID-19. And she's not alone. Valley News Team's Courtney Lockie has our story. This is Bernice, breaking through the finish line with a smile on her face. Yay, you do it! There's a lot to be excited about. At 96 years old, she recovered from hospice and said, bring it on to COVID, kicking the virus to the curb as well. We gave Bernice a scissors. She was going to cut the ribbon like she was crossing the finish line. But she says, no way. She goes, she just barreled right through that thing. And she goes, life's too short not to have fun. Even tied executive director Chris Gilson says Bernice isn't alone. This is Marlene. And this is Vicky. They're also COVID survivors. The culmination of the last month, I mean, to, to have these positive moments um, to share with our residents, uh, the team that's been just above and beyond, it's just, it was, it was really great to have a moment like that. Gilson says it hasn't been easy, but with the help of these Eventide heroes, they're making it through all kinds of challenges together. In Fargo, Courtney Lockie, Valley News Live. <laughs> Gilson adds two more residents also recovered from COVID this weekend at Eventide's Fargo campus. Well, today is Mother's Day and all across the country were scenes like this with families visiting loved ones in long term care facilities stuck outside. This was at Edgewood Fargo, where this family came to say hi to their mother and grandmother in a safe, physically distant way. A parade in the parking lot with other families and flags set up with six feet in between kept this family together while staying apart. She's such a big part of our lives and it's been really hard on all of us not to get to be with her personally. So we bundled everybody up and we were going to be here no matter what. How did it make you feel, Grandma? Oh, wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Four generations of their family gathered today celebrating all the mothers in the family. Well, Harvest Church in Frazee, Minnesota, wasn't going to let social distancing restrictions stop their Mother's Day church service from happening. So the church held a drive-in service. This is the second one of the year. This was the scene of the first one on Easter Sunday. Organizers say they had 60 cars in attendance today and many more tuning in over live stream. The audio of the service is played through an FM radio station. Meeting together in a drive-in and having people come out and yeah show their appreciation and honk and have a good time um it, it really blesses me as a pastor and uh fills my heart with joy and love and and i do believe that all of these alternative type services are offering hope harvest church says they will be holding a drive-in movie on friday with donations going to support youth activities in town 
Shanghai's Disneyland reopened to the public on Monday after being closed as part of measures to stop the spread of the coronavirus. The theme park will be implementing social distancing requirements and increased cleaning efforts as part of the country's continued effort to prevent a second outbreak of the virus. Visits to the theme park will initially be limited and must be booked in advance. The Disney parks in the U.S. have been closed since the middle of March, but Disney's chief medical officer says they are looking to at reopening options, including a phased opening opening plan, which would allow retail and dining locations to open before reopening the theme parks. And organizers for Fargo-Moorhead Pride have canceled all in-person Pride events this year. FM Pride says they are still looking at other options to celebrate that would allow for engagement and support in the community while maintaining social distancing. The group says Pride flags will still go up on Broadway the week of August 15th.